setting up this crowdfunding campaign. I probably mentioned this last time already. I realized that it is a lot of work to do this. Uh, Turtle Stitch is this um, shared platform like uh, the graphical programming environment like Strat uh, Scratch. It is based on Snap, as uh, I think every all of you know. And uh, you can uh, code in order to design embroidery patterns in the end. So, yeah, that's it. That's Turtle Stitch. And uh, it is uh, actually used uh, around the world. It's uh, not many users in numbers, but uh, it's very interesting that people from so different, many different cultures and countries are finding uh, their interest in uh, coding for the embroidery machine. And so I'm still very motivated uh, to continue to make the tool better. It works pretty okay uh, at, the, at the moment, but uh, there are, we have a lot of ideas for improvements too. And this is what we are very uh, intensively trying to fulfill. Uh, so in the, in the, at the moment, I'm very much in uh, trying uh, to get uh, financial support to, to pay the coder. This is, this is very a big, a big part of my work. Unfortunately, I'm doing a lot of management for Turtle Stitch. And uh, the, other thing I'm, uh, the other thing that is related, of course, to Turtle Stitch is that I'm going, uh, I'm representing uh, Code Week uh, Europe in Austria. Uh, I do it uh, as good as I can in the, in the rest of the time. Uh, yeah, and there we also have a lot to do in, in Austria. Yeah. Thank Alessandra you. Knows, yeah. Alessandra uh, is professional in that, so. <laughs> <laughs> we, Andrea have, has not presented her work yet. Uh, <laughs> we are waiting for it. It will be a very interesting thing when we are waiting for it, okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's, I have it in my mind. It's uh, absolutely present. It's very interesting, her work. Yes, really. Silver? Ah, hey. Oh, hey. hi. This is Silver from Estonia. Oh, would yeah. you like to introduce yourself, please? Uh, me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Silver. I'm from Estonia, from Tallinn. And uh, yeah, I work on this uh, Sumo Robot platform thingy I introduced in one of the meetings. So, so nice, nice to, to meet have you, you here. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you too. Beatrice? Hello, I'm Beatrice from Italy. I'm, I'm an Italian teacher, but I'm living in uh, Sweden. Uh, so um, I founded the makerspace in um, Fabriano, where we use at the Tartalto Stitch. <laughs> 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 so that's all. <laughs> yes. I'm I'm Louise. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I have a um, neurology, psychology uh, backgrounds, molecular biology backgrounds, and have been <laughs> a teacher since ever <laughs> and for the last 10 years I have worked in my method uh, that I have developed with for recovering uh, students of all ages uh, those who are having problem uh, at school all kinds of problem emotional um, curriculum pedagogical neurological and my work is to find a way to help them and put them on track. And after 10, 12 years already, uh, we can see it as a huge success because they succeed in school and can go on, uh, became very, very good students in high school and at college and good. And they are sharing now this, well being yes yes it's very powerful for me wow. yes that's what i do and the uh, scratch is this stuff is when 2013 i've heard about the learning creative learning and people saying that we may have to make the learning a little bit more funny more creative and i found my my group so we stick with this 
community and all the forts to have always in contact. That's what we do here now. That's it. Thank you. Okay. okay my turn. <laughs> so, Alessandro, you can start your presentation, please. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So, my name is Alessandro Bogliolo. I'm right now living in Urbino, in Italy. Urbino is a UNESCO heritage site, so let me try to show you a picture of Urbino. Uh, this one, for instance. Okay, here it is. So, it's a wonderful place where uh, I hope that we'll meet at some time in the near future. And uh, here I'm a university professor of computer science uh, and uh, electronics. And since uh, 2013, uh, I'm uh, very active uh, in um, the diffusion uh, of uh, computational thinking and coding. Um, I'm uh, always been engaged in uh, cultural communication and dissemination. And that's why I started uh, uh, collaborating with the European Commission uh, for um, the coding literacy campaign called uh, Europe Code Week. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, also active uh, in the Hour of Code Computer Science Education Week. So being a computer scientist uh, and uh, an electrical engineer, I'm mainly uh, active uh, in uh, the diffusion of coding, uh, trying uh, to leverage uh, on uh, computer science, computer programming principles, uh, in order to make uh, them more accessible, not just uh, for uh, helping people approaching computer programming, but also because computational thinking uh, is a transversal skill that can be useful uh, in a transversal way. And that's why I'm uh, mainly working right now with schools uh, on this topic, because I think that uh, in order to uh, reach out uh, pupils, uh, the best way is uh, to try to empower teachers rather than trying to bypass teachers, uh, as uh, in many cases, uh, other activities and other initiatives tend to do. And this is more or less the approach that I took uh, in Italy since, well, let me close this picture. <laughs> that I took in Italy since the very beginning uh, of Europe Code Week. Uh, and and uh, right now in Italy, there is a huge community of teachers uh, the, who are very, very, very active in coding. And being active in coding as a teacher doesn't mean just uh, uh, taking part in Eurocode Week or the Hour of Code, but means finding uh, um, useful ways of making use of coding uh, during teaching practice, which is something that, in my opinion, is very different uh, and provides uh, a much deeper impact, both because uh, uh, you can... Uh, to some extent, practice coding uh, all the year long. But also because uh, if a teacher, while teaching uh, any topic, uh, finds it useful to make use uh, of coding, then it also allows pupils uh, to understand that coding uh, can be useful. It's not just uh, for fun, it's not just uh, for the sake of it, that they make use of coding. They use coding because their teachers find it fruitful in order to fully understand the topic or to try to put it in practice. So I think that this is bringing a great value to Italian schools and to all the schools where there are teachers taking this approach. So what I'd like to go through is, uh, even if I know that many of you already know it very well and are also very active in it, but uh, since this um, meeting will be recorded, uh, I hope that this will be also useful uh, to bring other people into the Code Week community and uh, to involve other peoples and to uh, reach out to other countries possibly. 
Uh, and then I'd like also to spend a few words uh, on uh, the um, activities that we are running uh, in Italy in particular. Some of them uh, I hope that can be exported and replicated somewhere else. And I'm also looking for a partnership uh, in order to try to exchange best practices uh, and to try to create uh, a community which is uh, very active at the international level, possibly allowing also pupils to work together across borders. So um, I, I could probably at this point uh, share my screen again. And uh, um, go, well, I can probably share the entire screen. Now there will be some uh, video echo that Go here. So in a Europe, so use this one. Okay. Okay. Please let me know if you can see the home page okay. uh, mm -hmm. of Europe Code Week. Okay. So Europe Code Week is a grassroots initiative uh, started in 2013 uh, from uh, the idea of the so-called uh, young advisors of the former vice president uh, uh, Neely Cruz. And uh, the idea was uh, very successful uh, from the very beginning because uh, they, um, they were able to engage uh, so-called Code Week ambassadors in many European countries and ambassadors in their turn were able to involve uh, many event organizers. Mm -hmm. So the idea of Euro Code Week uh, is just uh, to concentrate uh, in uh, one week uh, a lot of uh, coding events that are completely technology neutral and technology agnostic uh, in the sense that uh, there is uh, no specific format uh, and no specific tools to be used to run a coding event. So the idea was to raise awareness on the importance of coding by um, organizing so many events in just one week to provide a lot of opportunities to So it's a grassroots initiative in the sense that it is not directly led by the European Commission, rather it is completely managed by Code Week ambassadors who are uh, uh, volunteers. And event organizers are volunteers in their turn. There is no legal entity behind uh, Europe Code Week. So it's just uh, a group of volunteers, like a movement, uh, without uh, any legal form uh, and any legal settlement. Um, what happened is that uh, um, in uh, a few years, uh, we realized that coding uh, was not just uh, useful uh, to try to fill in the skill gap, to try to convince uh, people that coding uh, was something uh, useful and accessible uh, in order to convince people, young people, especially girls, uh, to um, try to play with it uh, and possibly um, choose uh, to study uh, coding, computer programming, and possibly uh, take a career in uh, computer science. But it was also very, very useful uh, to develop computational thinking skills because uh, uh, trying to provide instructions to a so-called uh, ideal executor um, imposes uh, you to really understand uh, a procedure better than uh, um, how we usually do for ourselves. Because uh, we need to uh, make uh, our creativity, our ideas constructive in order to allow a computer or a robot uh, to do something that we have in mind. And this um, allows us to develop uh, the so-called computational thinking skills uh, that are not just uh, a side effect of coding, but are probably one of the main values that coding activities can provide. And that's why um, not just uh, Europe Code Week, but also the Computer Science Education Week, from um, the nature of... Um, 
I would say, awareness raising campaigns switched to true literacy campaigns in the sense that uh, we realized that coding and computational thinking uh, are really for all, not just uh, for those who at some point in their life uh, decide uh, to take a specific career or specific studies. And in order to uh, make it uh, pratic and inclusive as possible, um, uh, I realized that, that the best way was uh, to try to involve uh, schools uh, through teachers. So, in, as you know, um, if we compare how coding and computer science uh, are taught in uh, different countries, uh, we find uh, big differences. And these differences uh, are related to uh, curricula to the way in which computer science uh, enters uh, into school curriculum. But coding is something different because uh, coding uh, has been made so accessible thanks uh, to, especially, to uh, visual programming languages uh, and to the so-called unplugged activities that coding can also be practiced. So if we have an activity which is uh, um, so versatile, uh, so um, flexible and um, so productive and so accessible that uh, even a kid can uh, directly approach it without uh, studying a formal language before becoming productive then this same activity, this same tool, uh, can also be used uh, in the teaching activity by teachers uh, together with their pupils. And the idea was to um, exploit Europe Code Week uh, and uh, any campaign uh, like Europe Code Week uh, as an icebreaker to convince teachers uh, to um, make a test, uh, to try to uh, organize uh, some coding activity during school hour, possibly, not after school, in order to um, reach out uh, all their pupils, and not just uh, those who were already interested in the topic uh, and um, from a socioeconomic point of view, possibly already able to take after school activities. And in this way, we built uh, a huge community of teachers uh, that uh, is uh, growing very fast uh, and uh, is uh, keeping growing over time. And this community is uh, once again uh, a, like a grassroots movement in the sense that it is uh, almost independent uh, of the official actions taken by governments. In Italy, we had uh, a very, um, I would say, fortunate uh, um, action that uh, took advantage of the fact that the Italian government and the Italian Ministry of Education endorsed these kind of activities, both by endorsing Europe Code Week and by endorsing the Computer Science Education Week. But the Italian government at the beginning uh, just uh, made uh, this kind of endorsement. But it was very, very important to legitimate uh, the independent action of teachers. Because if a teacher um, is willing to test something new at school, it is very important for him or for her to have some legitimation from the Ministry of Education. And this is what happened in Italy. Then. In Italy, happened something more because uh, the Ministry of Education uh, um, also put uh, the logo of the Ministry of Education uh, in a web portal, which is called uh, Programma Il Futuro, which is Program Your Future, which is the Italian version of Code.org. So once again, this is not big deal because uh, this is uh, at the very hand uh, just uh, a mirror site. Right now, it is not just a mirror site, but at the beginning, it was just a mirror site uh, of code.org. But the fact that it was the Ministry of Education to make it available, once again, had a great impact. And uh, just to finish about Code Week, I want to mention that uh, the best instrument, uh, the main instrument that Code Week uh, has uh, to create 
this movement and keep track of what's happening uh, is the event map. Right now, the event map uh, is, uh, you see, quite empty because this is uh, for um, the next edition, uh, the 2018 edition that will happen uh, on, um, in October. But if we look at previous years, uh, we find a lot of events uh, and a lot uh, of, um, of participants. So last edition uh, um, involved uh, more than one million people, uh, not only in Europe, as you can see, but mainly in Europe. And uh, the events that were organized were uh, about uh, 25,000. Uh, and as you can see, there are uh, a lot of events uh, that were organized in Italy just because of the deep involvement of teachers. So the, the key success factor of the Italian participation in this kind of initiatives uh, is just the involvement of teachers. Because, Excuse uh, me, teachers, uh, yes, Alessandro, just to, to make it clear for me, uh, you said that as a show in this map, uh, you, the Europe Code Week involves other countries too. Uh, yes, the people absolutely. make these events during the Code Week in their own countries or people that go to Europe to, to, to help? No, 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 no. How is it? No, this is, a, this is a, um, something which is very, very informal in nature. And we um, would like uh, Code Week to possibly uh, happen in uh, countries uh, outside Europe. So we, uh, uh, is a great uh, Code Week ambassador and uh, he has been uh, very, very active, uh, uh, for instance, uh, in, um, in Asia, in Africa, and also in the US. And uh, the idea uh, is to have uh, as many ambassadors as possible all over the world. Needless to say, being uh, an initiative uh, um, promoted by the European Commission, uh, our first mission uh, is to engage uh, as many people as possible in Europe. Okay. But we also like uh, to have events organized outside Europe. And uh, being uh, so informal as an initiative, there are uh, no mandatory events uh, or no main events. So uh, even uh, uh, one hour spent uh, in, by a teacher with, their, with his or her pupils in their classrooms is something that can be registered as a Code Week event uh, as long as uh, they do something with coding uh, during that hour. So that's the idea. And okay. this means that organizing a Code Week event uh, uh, should be as easy as possible because we would like a Code Week uh, to be used as an icebreaker in the sense that once uh, you start uh, uh, playing with coding, especially at school, uh, you usually find out that it is uh, so rewarding and so useful and so easy to, um, so engaging and so easy to, to practice uh, that uh, in most cases uh, you'll uh, find other ways uh, and uh, other chances of uh, making use of coding all, all, the, all over the year. So Code Week is not uh, uh, to be considered as a, a learning uh, opportunity, but rather just uh, like uh, um, a movement. festival or, yes, you know. A, an event in which uh, you are uh, able to get in touch with something that possibly is contaminating you and your school and your pupils. So leveraging on that, uh, we are trying to build something which is more stable. And one of the instruments that I used in the, in the last years has been uh, a MOOC where MOOC is the acronym that stays for Massive Open Online Course. And uh, I decided to run a MOOC for teachers called Coding in Your Classroom Now. I started it uh, in um, January 2016, and uh, probably I did it uh, uh, in Italian and in Italy at the right time, because at that time uh, uh, in Italy there were uh, a few changes in school uh, and also some fundings uh, allocated for uh, digital skills. Uh, uh, there were um, initiatives 
announced but not uh, already active. So once I started uh, this MOOC, many, many teachers enrolled very soon, very soon without uh, any, any advertising. I thought that it was just for a few people, but it uh, ended up uh, since the very beginning uh, involving thousands of teachers. So right now there are uh, about uh, uh, 28,000 teachers uh, enrolled uh, in the MOOC and more than half a million pupils involved uh, through their teachers. So this means that it's making a difference uh, also because this MOOC is not just uh, one hour of code, but this MOOC is uh, a, a teacher's training activity which is uh, um, delivered by a university. So this means that it is recognized and certified. So uh, all the teachers uh, who complete the MOOC get a certificate from the university. Uh, the MOOC is uh, available for free and on demand. So this means that this is a, a, a training activity that is offered for free by a university, is certified, is recognized by the Ministry of Education. So it uh, allows teacher to do something which is uh, rewarding on one side because it's about coding, uh, and on the other side, it is also recognized uh, for their careers, even if it is not uh, exactly about careers because uh, having uh, uh, such a certification does not you to make any progress in your career but this is something which is mandatory right now in Italy not taking my MOOC but taking some training for teachers so there are there is a training a teacher training policy in Italy which makes it mandatory for teachers uh, to take uh, some training so um, may I, I add a, a thing I sure. want to say that Alessandro is a really a star in, uh, <laughs> in Italy for the teacher. Now you are really loved by the teacher because he, he um, succeed to, to spread coding and uh, the idea that coding is so important that all teachers want <laughs> to, to study with uh, Alessandro. <laughs> Thank you, Beatrice. Yes. Um, oh, uh, before going back to, to the Italian case and my MOOC, I'd like also to mention that uh, the um, European Commission has uh, published uh, this um, document, uh, which is the Digital Education Action Plan um, at the beginning of 2018. Code Week uh, is explicitly mentioned here. And in particular, what is explicitly mentioned uh, is that uh, one of the key actions uh, in the Digital Education Actions Plan is to bring uh, Europe Code Week uh, in all European schools. This is a very challenging uh, goal, uh, as you can imagine, because there are countries in which uh, code, code Week has no penetration at all in schools. But this is something that uh, um, means uh, that even the European Commission and uh, in particular Commissioner Maria Gabriel, who is uh, the, um, uh, the one in charge for the digital agenda and for this kind of actions, uh, um, perceived that uh, it is very, very important to bring uh, coding uh, into schools uh, in order to uh, fertilize, in order to try to create uh, a proper terrain uh, to start uh, filling in not just, uh, not only gap, but also gender gaps, for instance. Because coding uh, has no gender gaps at all. When you practice coding uh, in primary schools, you don't see any gender gap. It is uh, probably counterproductive to focus on gender gaps uh, in primary schools because girls uh, don't feel any gap, don't feel any difference between uh, uh, girls and boys. So we don't need uh, to do anything else uh, than keep involving both of them. So let me close this parenthesis, but this is a very important one because this means that uh, uh, initiatives like yours, Eloisa, and uh, opportunities like this of uh, uh, speaking about the importance, the importance of coding at schools uh, with people who can 
make a difference uh, are very, very important uh, and go exactly into the direction which is uh, foreseen by the European Commission and not only by the European Commission because uh, all uh, over the world there are initiatives like this which uh, can uh, then be synergistic uh, and uh, perceive the same goals. So this is the website uh, of, um, of Coding in Your Classroom Now. Um, the website uh, is called codemook.org. And um, I show you this, and this is in particular the uh, page where you see, uh, it is in Italian, unfortunately, because this is just for Italian teachers, but you can see here the program of the course. So as you can see, it's not, it's not a short course. It's a 48 hours course. And um, it is called the coding in your classroom now, because basically what I provide uh, is just motivation and support to teachers uh, who want to introduce coding in their classrooms now. So I'm not just uh, uh, speaking about something that can uh, eventually be done, but I uh, try to um, force <laughs> also them to uh, experiment something uh, in their classrooms because there are assignments and the assignments uh, usually uh, involve pupils. So basically teachers, uh, in order to um, uh, complete the assignments, uh, have to try to do something uh, in their classrooms uh, or at least uh, plan what to do. And based on that, uh, um, an entire ecosystem uh, have, has been developed. And those are all the resources that are right now available. So there are uh, other MOOCs. So this is uh, making apps in your classroom now. This is a MOOC for teachers who want to help uh, their um, colleagues. Uh, this is a new MOOC uh, that I'm running right now, which is called um, Algorithmi Quotidiani days for uh, daily algorithms or everyday algorithms in which I try to um, explain algorithms to people who have no um, computer science background. And then there are many instruments. Uh, this, this is the, the platform used to deliver the MOOC. This is a YouTube channel where all the video lessons are available for free. Uh, this is a Telegram channel, this is a shared calendar with all the events, uh, and then there is a, a huge community of practice. Let me just, for instance, show you the map. Um, okay, this is the map uh, of Italian teachers uh, who have already gained uh, certificates, and uh, those are This means that those are the ones uh, who have completed uh, my courses. And the ones that you see here is just the ones who decided uh, to make it public, who are uh, about um, one, uh, um, I would say 25%, 30% of the, of the total. And if you click, for instance, here, you see how many <laughs> there are in each point of the map. And then going back uh, to the resource page, uh, there is a, a Facebook group which is very, very, very active. So right now there are um, about 30,000 uh, teachers enrolled in this group and uh, more than 90% of them are active every month. So this means that they do something in the group. Uh, so there are uh, more than 25,000 people uh, uh, being active in the group every month. And then there are uh, other groups uh, and spontaneous groups that sprout. And then uh, some instruments uh, which are um, free, um, so creative common uh, um, resources that I made available. Code Aerobic, Code Way, and then Code.org and Scratch, uh, which are the two main uh, uh, tools uh, that I use uh, during and uh, mention during my MOOCs uh, uh, in order to uh, speak about uh, visual programming. And then, well, 
other stuff like this. Then there are books, uh, calendars, uh, well, um, a school diary, uh, which is something I'm very proud of uh, and that I, I would be uh, very happy to have translated in other languages because this is a, a school diary, uh, which is also some form of augmented reality that every day um, of the year proposes a different coding activity. And this coding activity is an unplugged one, but can also be um, augmented with, an, with a free application, which is an augmented reality app like this one. And, and that's it. And then once again, going back here, um, there are other activities that I like to mention. So robots, okay, and TV programs uh, and summer schools uh, and uh, live events and so on. But going back to the, um, these two activities here, so those are two activities that I'd like to describe shortly if I have, uh, if I have time. So please uh, interrupt me if I am too long. No, it's amazing. <laughs> Please go on. Thank you. So uh, I, I'd like to mention uh, a few things. So the first one is uh, um, a very simple activity. Let me switch uh, to another window, which is uh, this one. Okay. Okay, uh, do you see the presentation? Mm -hmm. Yes. In full screen? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, um, so this is uh, Cody Robby. Cody Robby is just a card game, which is based uh, on activities which are not new because uh, the idea is that uh, in order to provide uh, an unplugged coding experience, uh, um, we can uh, use just a, a board. In this case, I choose it to use a five by five board because it was uh, big enough uh, to make uh, significant things uh, and small enough uh, uh, to be very easy to implement. And then there is a card box. Those are all the cards that we need. Those are uh, go ahead, uh, turn right, turn left, and then special cards. And all those cards are Creative Commons and can be downloaded and printed for free. And uh, this is the board. Those are the pieces and the, um, and the card box. Is a, a go ahead or move forward card. This is a turn left, turn right. And those are the special cards representing loops uh, and loops. conditions, uh, mm -hmm. if uh, and else. And those uh, represent any kind of loops. Uh, so conditional loops, uh, um, uh, repetition, uh, counters, and so on. And uh, OK, I don't want to go into the details, but the idea is that these cards can be used uh, to, um, to play as a board game to the left or on the floor, or uh, on, um, on a carpet like, uh, like uh, the, the one to the right. So uh, go ahead means this, turn left means this, go ahead again, turn right. Okay, and based on that, you can uh, uh, just uh, uh, put cards in sequence in any way, uh, exploiting uh, this, um, you, you see this shape uh, which uh, resembles that uh, of visual programming uh, in order to create uh, these um, analogies with what uh, you can do online. And the idea, uh, well, this uh, slide here, all the activities that are proposed in the Hour of Code can be reproduced in an unplugged way using this kind of cards. And I don't want to go through them right now. But basically the idea is that uh, there's a, a toolkit uh, which is uh, very, very simple, so trivial that you could uh, make 
appears and recreate it from scratch rather than just printing out the cards that I make available can be used not only to go through all the uh, learning activities that are proposed in the hour of code, but you can use it uh, as a development tool. So the idea is to take uh, these uh, card deck pieces and to try to invent games that can uh, use these cards uh, as a gameplay. So uh, that's, for instance, uh, what uh, I, um, I did uh, by proposing uh, a few uh, examples of games, uh, like uh, one which is called The Tourist, uh, one that is called uh, The Duel, uh, one that is called The Blind Date, uh, and so on. But I also made uh, a TV program uh, which uh, was uh, filmed uh, in a school class where uh, I had uh, three groups um, the first group uh, were uh, the game masters uh, who conceived uh, and built the game together with me. And the other two were the two teams uh, competing uh, and testing the game. And um, every time we invented, implemented uh, and played a different game uh, using only these cards uh, and the floor of the class where we were. So the idea is that this kind of unplugged activities are so accessible that there is no excuse in order not to practice coding. So that's, that's basically the, the idea. And then, uh, okay, let me close this presentation and to go back to... Um, okay, here the web here I am again and while uh, um, the code hunting games are uh, another type of um, of activity and tool that we um, developed here at the University of Urbino and made available which make use uh, in this case of telegram a so-called telegram bot so a Telegram bot is just uh, a way of uh, exploiting Telegram, which is, uh, as you probably know, uh, an instant messaging uh, system and application to make people interact uh, through a chatterbot uh, with our servers. And our servers uh, um, implement uh, a software who um, basically uh, conduct uh, a, a treasure hunt game. So the idea is that uh, um, teams can uh, register to the game and at a given point uh, they can uh, play the game uh, which is um, set uh, in uh, different settings, usually uh, around uh, a city. And um, what the teams uh, have to find are QR codes. And every QR code contains uh, a so-called deep link uh, to our bot, uh, which uh, tells uh, our servers uh, where the team is. And once we know where the team is, we uh, challenge the team uh, with, uh, um, yeah, it's uh, like um, a coding uh, uh, puzzle in which we make use of the same paradigm uh, of uh, Kodi Robi, so very simple commands uh, on a, for moving a robot on a board to, um, to challenge the team to solve the puzzle. And only if they solve the puzzle, uh, we tell them where to go next so they can move to the next step. And what's nice of this uh, kind of game uh, is that uh, using this instant messaging system, uh, we can uh, um, organize uh, um, treasure hunt games uh, or code hunting games uh, all over the world at the same time. So we have uh, no other needs. Uh, interacting with the bot uh, allow also the event organizers to organize the game in their own city. 
and to decide where to place the QR codes and the bot provides the QR codes to be printed out uh, and, and uh, hidden in the places that they decided and then we can control the game in order to be played all over the world simultaneously and we did it uh, during uh, last year and we plan to do it again this year but right now this technology is also open and can be used at any time by anybody and the other uh, similar thing that uh, we made is called the Cody Maze, which is uh, this one. Cody Maze is uh, once again based on Telegram bots uh, and uh, on uh, QR codes. QR codes uh, are uh, fixed in this case. There are uh, 25 QR codes that have to be placed on a 5 by 5 square which uh, uh, represents uh, the board where, uh, for instance, Cody Robbie um, was uh, played. But the idea here is that uh, once uh, you have a smartphone uh, and you scan a QR code in uh, one of these points, you tell the bot where you are in the board. Um, basically, provides instruction that you have uh, to execute uh, as if you were the robot. And the idea is that uh, the server creates for you a maze in this uh, five by five board and don't see the walls of the maze and you don't know the path. So the only way you have to exit the maze is to follow instructions. And uh, suppose that the instructions are as simple as uh, move forward, turn, turn left, uh, move forward. Then you have to do these three steps and then you have to scan the QR code again. And if you made the proper steps, uh, you are in the right position and you are uh, recognized to be there by our bot, uh, which uh, assigns you the next uh, uh, set of instructions that you have to execute and so on and so on and so on and uh, the um, complexity of the code that you have to execute to exit uh, the maze is increasingly complex so that uh, at the end when you at last uh, exit uh, the maze you have uh, practiced all the um, main uh, uh, principles <laughs> of uh, yeah commands and principles of coding uh, corresponding to the hour of code uh, and you get uh, your hour of code certificate and what's nice of this kind of activities uh, is that uh, the QR codes could be placed uh, in a big square for instance uh, in a place uh, where many many people uh, can uh, independently from each other play with it because uh, the server can manage uh, the simultaneous uh, usage of the same board by a, an unlimited number of users so i tried it uh, with more than 300 people uh, on the same board simultaneously and each of them uh, uh, was playing uh, with a different moving on the same board and those are all examples of activities that can be used in order to uh, provide a, an unplugged coding experience uh, or a mixed uh, plugged and unplugged coding experience uh, without uh, relying uh, on uh, the um, background uh, of the facilitators so that's the main idea so I think that right now I can uh, stop here this uh, overview, but I'm, uh, I would be very happy to answer in, questions. If the, if in this like. case, uh, the instructions are in English also? Yeah, only? this is localized and uh, this can be localized. Uh, all those projects are open source. Uh, so this means that uh, they are uh, open uh, to any contribution. They can be localized in many different languages right now they are just in a few i i think three or four but it's very very easy to localize them because the interactions uh, are um, based uh, on a few sentences uh, that uh, can be translated in a uh, couple of hours or something like that
Maybe here is the language as well. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In Swedish, Slovenian, Italian, English, Spanish. Yeah. <clears throat> um, can I ask something? Sure. Uh, about the telegram treasure treasure hunt, but uh, can you can you actually use it to organize a treasure hunt? Like, yep. Ah, okay. You can um, yes. Uh, so um, let me. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, find out. Yeah. Here. Here there are instructions for mm -hmm. uh, event organizers, and. Um, Right now, there is uh, um, quite a standard way of organizing uh, a game that was uh, conceived uh, to organize simultaneous games uh, during uh, Europe Code Week. But using the same approach, uh, you can uh, even right now organize a game uh, in your town uh, and uh, play it uh, independently from uh, any other organizer. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. Sure. Um, also, I wanted to ask actually that uh, how much support did, uh, for example, the Italian government or, I mean, you're working in a university right now or in a school or? University. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, yeah. the university is also supporting this cause and everything or? Uh, yes, uh, just uh, by making uh, available, for instance, the server where mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is running, but I had no support at all. So uh, oh, okay. I, um, I started uh, making uh, all these activities uh, uh, as a volunteer. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm teaching computer architecture at university as my main uh, job, and I'm mm -hmm. uh, doing research in different topics like uh, wireless sensor networks, uh, um, also collective intelligence, uh, crowd sensing, and so on. Uh, so this is just uh, something that I initiated as a volunteer. But then I involved uh, the university in order, when I started to deliver MOOCs, um, mm -hmm. not just for uh, um, providing uh, some stuff uh, or making available to me some stuff uh, or for paying uh, the, um, the hours that I spent uh, teaching or managing the community, but uh, for uh, recognizing uh, the MOOC uh, and delivering the MOOC officially as a university, which is very, very important. So mm -hmm. um, there is no money involved, but an endorsement and the recognition uh, from the university, which is a uh, very important added value. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. I'd like also to mention something about the MOOC that I forgot to mention before, that the MOOC was uh, also recognized uh, as uh, a so-called pledge uh, by the Digital Skills and Jobs Coalition uh, of the European Commission. Uh, this means that the, Europe, the University of Urbino pledged to keep it uh, uh, running in order to allow more teachers uh, in Italy to get involved and uh, also to encourage other countries uh, to replicate uh, this model because uh, the success of CodeMOOC uh, happened uh, by chance. But right now, ex post, uh, I have uh, quite a good idea of uh, which uh, uh, have been the success factors of CodeMOOC. So I would be more than happy to help uh, other countries uh, replicate this model, uh, having their own teachers, not uh, their own instructors. Not I'm not saying that I that I think that my MOOC uh, should be translated in other languages because this is uh, uh, this won't work because I think that one of the success factors was uh, the fact that I'm very very close uh, to the teachers uh, that I'm training. So I think that even if uh, I do it at a distance uh, using online tools, uh, being uh, Italian and speaking to Italian uh, teachers uh, makes a difference. 
And I think that the same should happen in other countries uh, in order to create uh, the same sense of community, the sense of belonging, proximity that uh, uh, happened in Italy. So I'm not saying that uh, you have to take material and to offer it in other countries. Rather, I'm saying that uh, if in some countries there is someone uh, willing uh, to uh, run a MOOC for teachers about coding, uh, I would be more than happy to help uh, him or her uh, set up uh, everything uh, and possibly um, take advantage uh, of the success factors of CodeMOOC uh, uh, to possibly implement some of them, uh, replicate some of them uh, in a different country. Uh, um, Alessandro, but also you are a great, great uh, communicator. So maybe 80% I can say is uh, due to the fact that you are able to explain very, very clearly uh, what, what uh, uh, all about computer science, even if you are uh, teaching in uh, university. So you are, you are able to really um, uh, be understand, understand, I don't know how to say in English, uh, is, uh, you're really, um, teachers are really, really uh, involved in your, uh, in your MOOC also because you uh, uh, have these qualities. I don't know if in other countries it's possible. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 know, I know for sure that in other countries there are <laughs> many people. Like, like <laughs> I, I don't know why, but for example, in Finland there is, a, you, you, we talked about, uh, there is, a, um, uh, help me, uh, she's uh, the ambassador. Um, yes. She's a very good, but why she was also very good as a communicator? Why is that not not happening? I don't know. Yeah, uh, well, there are countries. Uh, so the um, point of observation that we have uh, uh, through the participation to Code Week uh, is not representative enough uh, of what is really happening uh, in many countries because there are countries in which uh, even if uh, um, ambassadors uh, uh, are in a position uh, where they uh, could possibly involve schools, yeah. but there are countries in which uh, the importance uh, of bringing code week in schools is not perceived. So this means yeah. that uh, there could be computer science at all the school uh, or coding uh, yeah. used uh, as a transversal tool uh, in many schools like it happens uh, in Finland. Um, without uh, any event uh, on the map of Code Week. So this is something that we need uh, to work at, but it is uh, yeah. even more important to me to try to bring uh, coding in schools uh, where uh, neither of the two happen. So yeah. um, I, as a uh, Code Week uh, coordinator, I, um, I'm working uh, to convince uh, Finland uh, that even if they already do coding at school, it is very important to also feel this sense of community and belonging uh, and take part in a European uh, uh, initiative like Europe Code Week. But I'm uh, even uh, more uh, involved in trying to bring coding in schools in those countries where it is not so diffused. So there is also coding, for example, uh, happening in Austria in schools, but Code Week is not uh, represented at all. Yeah. So this is a more a kind of uh, the the job I uh, have is uh, to uh, work more on the publicity of uh, Code Week in, yeah. in Austria yeah. and bring it yeah. to teachers uh, uh, as um, a, a, a kind of a tool which can reward the, them, for example, with certificates or whatever. Yeah. Or there yeah. are different yeah. ways to do it. I start doing it, but uh, to be honest, I would really need to get support from uh, other people in Austria too, because I'm uh, quite overloaded with the work for Turtle Stage at the moment. Also, also Austria is so small. I mean, sorry? It's so small respect to Italy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 60 million of inhabitants in Italy and other countries are not so loud. But I'm, I'm not the first one who is trying hard, so let's see. 
we are we are doing our best. I so I have a small team and it's pretty new, but uh, it's it's just one uh, country within the European uh, Union. It but it is very uh, different to the Italian situation. Yeah. Yeah, I know there are many differences, but that's uh, another reason why I think that uh, on one hand, uh, a MOOC for teachers uh, could be very, very useful. But on the other hand, uh, this MOOC cannot be standardized. So it's something that uh, has to be adapted to the needs uh, of every country, to the culture, mm -hmm. but also to the rules. Because, for instance, uh, uh, teacher's training uh, is something which is uh, usually regulated in very different ways uh, across countries. Mm -hmm. So it is impossible to provide a single solution. Mm -hmm. But um, what I, I think could be replicated uh, is the idea of empowering teachers. So the reason why a MOOC uh, is a great resource uh, is because it builds on teachers. Yeah. This means that there are two multiplicative effects. The first one is that every teacher can teach tens or hundreds of pupils. But the other effect is over time because teachers are keeping teaching. So once you have empowered them, they will keep practicing coding with their pupils. Um, I, I'd like to show you this picture because um, this is a picture and also um, a phrase that I'm uh, very proud of because this is a picture that was taken uh, in a school during a webinar that I made. Sometimes uh, I run webinars uh, during school hours and in these webinars uh, I speak directly to kids and uh, this was uh, the first feedback that I had. And uh, you see, <laughs> it's amazing. So <laughs> starting from uh, that picture, I started thinking that uh, um, in, uh, so coding is so engaging uh, that it's not just about computational thinking. So the benefit uh, that it can bring to schools uh, goes probably well beyond what uh, as a computer scientist I could imagine, just because of the engagement uh, that it can uh, provide and the form of rewarding uh, both for pupils and for teachers. Uh, and I think that this picture that was taken uh, in probably the worst condition, the worst condition because uh, having uh, uh, pupils uh, listening and watching uh, uh, on a screen, uh, a university professor is, should be the, the most boring situation ever. And <laughs> looking at these faces was so amazing that then I, I went to that school that is very far from, <laughs> from Urbino, by the way. Uh, and uh, I sometimes uh, uh, go again uh, and visit them because they are so warm <laughs> and so rewarding for me as well. So the, this is something that I wanted to show to Eloisa because of your background uh, and also because of your activity. So I think uh, I would be very happy to work with you also on that side. Yes, uh, you see, I, I work by my own. By my own. And since 2013, when I first <laughs> have contact with Scratch and the learning, creative learning, I start doing Scratch days by myself as volunteer, of course, and I have this kind of reaction. And here in Brazil, uh, you know, it's totally different, the situation, the economics, uh, we have both sides of it. We have a very rich, poor, the difference, the social, economical uh, difference is huge. So we have, uh, other day I was in a workshop for teachers in a very expensive school, big school here. And we see that all the kids have many computers, many, many language kids. But the teachers do paste and cop and give papers to follow these instructions. <laughs> so yeah. it's not creative. So I totally agree with you that with this kind of uh, think that idea of preparing teachers because even when they have structures, tools, uh, money, uh, they have no idea of, of this kind of stuff that we are uh, 
passionate about uh, this kind of reaction that's what move, moves us on isn't it <laughs> and so that's the the two sides of the the stuff so we have a huge country uh, it's totally new for instance in 2013 i was the only brazilian and i has no it background so so it only the only brazilian and it mock so i <laughs> i glue it on the italians and that's what I, I would like to discuss because i see that the italians are so self-motivated uh, so <laughs> yes <laughs> the common the italian community thank god they speak a little italian so i could glue them then and work because we have to make uh, collaborative works and stuff like this so i had no other brazilians and since then we have been trying to do something here but it's everything it's very difficult here you know uh, we are through a very political problem situation everything is worse so talking about this pink italy you have with so many 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 teachers in poverty that's amazing um, of course you have as you told you have the minister educational minister supporting endorsing that i think this is no 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 it's i think it can make difference isn't it but also the italian as you say beatrice the italians are so social i'd like to understand better why the italians are so involved in this for instance germany austria they have money they have Culture, but they don't have this movement uh, i'd like to discuss in terms of europe you that are expert in europe and stuff so what's what's happening how could you explain that well it, it's so diverse uh, so there are so many differences there are <laughs> the only reason that i can really find uh, uh, which is uh, structural uh, and not based on uh, the cultural the attitude uh, is uh, related with what i said so, which is uh, the the involvement of teachers this is the only action that i built over time because uh, in 2013, when I started working as a Code Week ambassador, the first thing that I made uh, is, uh, was to convince uh, the Ministry of Education to send out a letter to all the schools. And in this letter, I asked schools uh, to name a representative, a teacher, uh, and to ask the teacher to enroll to a newsletter in order to have a mailing list uh, which was a true one and not just an official one because in italy if you want to find uh, the email address of a school uh, you can find uh, the ma official email address which is just a code not a name so it's something that uh, you know uh, is pure formal and nobody read while uh, if uh, you find within a school a teacher who is uh, interested in something uh, and you ask uh, him or her to enroll and to keep under control what's happening on that side and possibly uh, try to refer to the school then this could work and at the beginning just a few teachers uh, enrolled to this newsletter because uh, this um, letter sent out by the ministry uh, doesn't work by itself so it uh, requires people so i had to call schools but having something on the website of the ministry of education i could say look the ministry of education uh, uh, told you to do so and so so please uh, i am the person in charge for that and so on then what happened again was that uh, uh, the day after the the year um, year after year i built 
on top of this mailing list, uh, which uh, started grow. And in the meantime, uh, uh, the initiative uh, that I, um, I mentioned, uh, which was uh, called, uh, which is called Programma il Futuro, started uh, uh, making schools uh, more aware of the importance of coding. And uh, I think that's it, because the third uh, factor was the MOOC. I think that those are the three main factors, because if uh, we uh, take uh, the map of Code Week events and we um, eliminate all the schools from the map, then Italy is not different from all other countries because coder dodgers uh, are uh, active for uh, as act are active for instance everywhere in Italy as uh, in other countries mm, it may be i don't know that in Italy there are more or they are more active i don't know there are much more that's yeah, yeah. but schools uh, are uh, the um, the game changers and unfortunately, um, targeting schools uh, is not something that you can make uh, from uh, one day to the other. You have to build on that uh, uh, year after year. So I think that the endorsement uh, of um, the endorsement of the challenge uh, um, that is um, that I mentioned uh, in the Digital Education Action Plan of the European Commission, at least in Europe, uh, provides an additional motivation. And I hope that this year it could uh, work a little bit to uh, start moving something in countries where schools are not uh, taking part in these initiatives. Because right now they are explicitly named. While uh, in uh, previous years, uh, I was the only ambassador uh, um, targeting uh, schools uh, as a main target of Eurocode Week. Even if uh, I invited uh, all other countries to do so, but it is not easy for uh, other ambassadors. Uh, um, we usually make uh, uh, the um, uh, commissioner uh, send out a letter to the Ministry of Education to invite them to invite schools, but it's not easy as well. But, but uh, Alessandro, also um, European Parliament recommended uh, CES in 2012, yes. but uh, CES now is, uh, the teachers are all specialized, they are not teacher, uh, um, yes. general teachers, so uh, they maybe they needed a MOOC <laughs> like you told them. Yeah, but I think that there is also something different about coding because I see coding at school as um, resembles to me CLIL, which stays for Content and Language Integrated yeah. Learning. Yeah, yeah, but also yeah. chess if you want, but... You yes, need... but uh, more or less, because I think that uh, let's compare coding to CLIL. So to me, coding uh, stays... Uh, at um, programming languages and uh, computer programming uh, as uh, your mother tongue stays uh, uh, at any foreign language in the sense that uh, coding uh, is uh, so intuitive that you can uh, um, leverage uh, the same mechanisms that allow you to start uh, speaking uh, when you are uh, a kid uh, rather than uh, um, going uh, through a formal uh, learning process uh, in order to learn it. So this means that uh, you can make use uh, of coding uh, even without uh, having a specific uh, background. So to some extent, uh, if uh, um, teachers uh, make use of coding uh, while teaching other topics, uh, they end up uh, teaching together the topic uh, and the vehicular instrument. In this case, it's not a vehicular language, but it's coding. And so uh, they uh, achieve two goals uh, at once. But on the other hand, with respect to CLIL, uh, the access barrier is much lower, and even with respect to chess, because uh, uh, chess 
is just uh, developing computational thinking skills or other skills, but is not uh, necessarily useful uh, to teaching uh, history or to teaching geography or to teaching uh, uh, computer science, mm -hmm. etc. Et <laughs> and, um, um, and on the other hand, it's not so easy for a teacher to make uh, pupils uh, may play chess, while uh, coding uh, can be approached together by pupils uh, and teachers. Teachers uh, don't need uh, to become teachers of coding. They can be teachers uh, who practice coding with their pupils. And this is something that can be done. While um, there are many other activities that are less uh, um, flexible and uh, have uh, higher access barriers, in my opinion. I, I think the problem is uh, uh, because it depends how you teach te chess. Uh, if chess, you, you can teach in different ways. You can teach as a programmer, teach programming or in coding. So mm -hmm. you have a lot of way, but mostly chess is uh, taught by chess player. And the chess players like you take uh, one, yeah, that is problem. Yep. I see. Uh, Adel, you are there? Are you there? Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Hello, oh, Adel, Alessandro. Hi. Mm, let me introduce you. Uh, yeah. Adel is from Tunisia. Uh, he's uh, an old friend from 2013, very active in group and very active in Tunisia. He does uh, amazing work with his uh, students all over. All over the country and and talking about <laughs> different conditions <laughs> he, he can tell a lot of uh, difficulties he has faced to, to improve coding in, in his country too. Adele would you like to talk please? Uh, hello, I'm, I just uh, arrived a little bit late, so I didn't catch uh, the whole, uh, I mean, the whole idea of the site, but uh, I, I think your site is a MOOC for teachers, right? Yeah, correct. The, the site is for teachers, huh? Oh, the, this work is for teachers. Yes. Yeah, actually, I'm um, representing here also Europe Code Week as an initiative mm -hmm. for uh, involving and engaging people with coding, uh, not, not just at school, while uh, the MOOC uh, is mainly for teachers. Right now, I'm also, um, yeah, I'm also giving another MOOC, uh, running another MOOC, uh, which is called uh, Everyday Algorithms which is for uh, everybody in the sense that I'm just uh, trying to explain uh, uh, the main algorithms uh, in order to uh, allow people to understand the computational aspects uh, of the real world and of the daily activities. And that's another idea. But I'd like also to mention that uh, um, I think that in this uh, group, uh, there are uh, many people that could be great uh, Code Week ambassadors uh, in their countries. Adel, Adel, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that uh, it would be great uh, if you would consider to join uh, the Code Week uh, movement uh, and play the role of ambassador in your country. Uh, so please have a look uh, at the Europe Code Week uh, website uh, and uh, consider the possibility of playing this role. Considering that being a Code Week ambassador means uh, just uh, doing uh, your best uh, in order to promote coding uh, and possibly uh, invite uh, other people to organize uh, events, uh, coding events uh, during Code Week. That's it. So it's, uh, uh, it's nothing here... like that. Here in uh, in Tunisia we have uh, something like that. It's called the uh, Africa Code Week. Africa. Yeah. I Code know Week. it. Uh, I know it very well because uh, it was uh, a spin-off yeah. of Europe Code Week. Yes, exactly. And um, uh, from the beginning, uh, I was not uh, like uh, super excited about uh, the way how they do it. 
I was excited about the idea. I, I love it. But the way I was thinking that we could uh, make much, uh, we, we can do better. This is the idea. And uh, even when, when I met uh, the um, uh, the responsible of Africa Code Week in, uh, I met them twice in um, in Kenya and in France. We talked about that, and I gave some um, my recommendation and my point uh, of view. And I still think that we should do. I mean, we should improve the quality of the the workshops. This is my point. What they are doing here in in Tunisia and I think around Africa, they are doing the same workshops, uh, introduction workshops, uh, every year for like two or three years. The same. It's like yeah, you, you are teaching why. a person how to read or write, and you only start with the A uh, character, just mm -hmm. for, for the character, and you repeat this every time. And I think, uh, for, for in my in my mind, uh, the Africa Code Week or even Europe Code Week, this kind of event, big event, uh, they should uh, introduce like new technology in coding. Uh, it's like the opportunity to bring uh, them a new technology. For example, robotics. For example, robotics is always there is Why always not? a new thing in technology, yeah. in, in coding let and me, robotics. So. Let me point out uh, a key difference between uh, Europe Code Week and Africa Code Week. While uh, Europe Code Week uh, is a grassroots movement uh, which uh, is uh, completely technology agnostic, uh, so that uh, it is uh, up to every event organizer to decide uh, which event to organize, and all the ones that you mentioned uh, will, would be more than welcome. Africa Code Week uh, was uh, a, a great contribution made by one single company, which is SAP. Exactly. So they, <laughs> Uh, put a lot of money on that uh, in order to provide everything was needed uh, to make it work uh, in the first year and then uh, to keep it uh, working. So they did uh, uh, the need to standardize the approach in, in order to uh, try to make sure that in countries where this movement uh, didn't uh, um, grew up by itself, they could bring uh, a seed and the seed uh, is what you mentioned so i think that uh, from this seed uh, you can move and you, you can go um and you can for sure do something which is uh, much better because uh, if you need to standardize something and you don't know exactly what you will find uh, in a country you have first of all to provide uh, some uh, training uh, to the trainers and that's what they did and by doing so they had to standardize a package but right now we can move forward leveraging both on Africa Code Week and on Europe Code Week so for instance if you think that in Tunisia there are the conditions for taking part in Europe Code Week as is as a grassroots movement without waiting for any company to put money on it uh, and yeah. to mm, propose a method in order to uh, expand the outreach. This can be done also in parallel because uh, the aim is the same, the goal is the same. And if there are two actions, uh, those are not conflicting at all. So we have, for instance, uh, some uh, ambassador in uh, African countries uh, uh, regardless of the fact that some of them could be the same uh, in which uh, Africa Code Week uh, is uh, also active. Uh, for instance, I mentioned Derek Breen, uh, who has been a great uh, Code Week ambassador who has took part uh, in uh, Africa Code Week events. So it's a uh, very, yes, very open. I had the opportunity to go to... Um... Africa to during the Africa Code Week, and I have arrived just one day after Derek has left, yeah. and I have participated. I have the opportunity to participate in the scrap uh, workshops during the day, and I saw how they. Yes, it was 2015. It was the very first one, uh, yeah. but at the same time, of course, there was a lot of things that would could improve as I see here in Brazil, of course. But I think the idea is uh, what you said, to 
plant the seeds to, to make it grow. Uh, we have to start from someone, some, somewhere. Uh, it's not, it's not easy. For, and it was uh, an Italian teacher that was invited from Europe to teach, uh, to give, uh, to, uh, to organize that uh, scratch workshops. They imported people from Italy. Again, I couldn't believe I saw that they had some accent. <laughs> and I, oh no, we were Italian. So it seems that Italians are everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but it was great. Uh, it was great, uh, very touchful to see those uh, boys working and new teachers learning how to do that. Yes. So how uh, is it integrated? How uh, it's, are you planning to do this year? Africa Code Week and Europe Code Week, how is it? How are you going to manage this, this year? Well, uh, this year the main difference uh, uh, stays in uh, the fact that we are explicitly targeting schools. Not only schools, but mainly schools. And this will make a difference because uh, uh, of the deeper involvement uh, of the European Commission and also of the Digital Skills and Jobs Coalition. Uh, which is uh, a coalition, uh, uh, multi-stakeholders coalition uh, involving companies uh, and um, also um, associations, uh, governments uh, and so on, who are all working uh, to try to fill in the skill gap, the digital skill gap. And uh, since uh, uh, the coalition uh, has been uh, asked uh, to contribute uh, we are trying also to um, involve coalition members uh, uh, to help uh, assist the Code Week ambassadors uh, in uh, reaching uh, schools. We are also uh, building uh, a new website uh, with new tools and uh, the commission is taking care of it. And uh, then I'm uh, planning to make available uh, resources uh, to, um, as I mentioned, uh, empower teachers. And among those, uh, there will be also resources that will be probably organized in a kind of nano MOOC. So something which is a short, 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 very short course for teachers. Uh, bringing them just to organize a Code Week event. And uh, this course uh, will uh, be for sure taught and delivered uh, in English, but possibly localized in many other languages. So there will be specific resources made available by the European Commission uh, on the Code Week portal, which will be localized in different languages. And uh, I'm uh, also planning uh, to set up this kind of uh, very short MOOC. And I, even for this MOOC, I'd like to find uh, help in other countries uh, to possibly reuse these materials uh, and to try to involve teachers and to assist them. Because also notice that uh, I, I said that uh, uh, I have no stuff provided by the university but this is uh, only partly true because uh, right now um, part of the activities uh, uh, that i'm um, that i'm doing in italy has uh, started involving uh, also research and uh, this means uh, that uh, some of uh, the researchers working with me on other topics uh, are also helping me developing this kind of tools. So there are great uh, uh, developers in my team who help me develop the games, for instance, that I mentioned, also the augmented reality uh, apps and stuff like that, that can then be made available for free, thanks to the university and thanks to the fact that for us uh, is also a research activity. 
or a public engagement activity because in my university I am also the, the responsible for public engagement. So this means that uh, public engagement is something uh, that uh, university can do which goes beyond uh, teaching uh, and research. Is something that uh, is called the third mission of universities, which is uh, the third one because the first two are those ones, teaching uh, and, uh, and research. So uh, really this year I hope to see more schools uh, involved uh, in other countries. That's it. So that's our main goal. So that's why I'm very, very happy of the opportunity of speaking to you and to all uh, uh, people in this group because I believe that you could uh, provide a great help in, uh, directly uh, by being directly involved possibly considering uh, to become uh, Code Week ambassadors, but also in uh, engaging uh, your own uh, networks of contacts, uh, uh, of contacts uh, to try to uh, expand the outreach of Code Week and in general, the diffusion of coding in schools. Sure. Now we made this content. <laughs> we built this bridge across the continents so yep. you can count on us yep <laughs> yes let, let's talk <laughs> so, i counted i started counting on you since the very first message that i got from derek so i oh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I really he, he, yes it's amazing <laughs> okay uh final considerations this is Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for answering so much questions. We have so much to, to ask. Um, Andrea Silver, would you like to ask anything more? Oh, I'm uh, very thankful for uh, all the insight for, we got from Alessandro. It was very interesting for me, especially also in my role here in Austria. It reminded me to, um, again, uh, try to contact the relevant persons at the ministry for reaching out to the schools. I did already uh, some kind of presentations uh, and I got some um, very promising uh, messages back, but uh, of course there is uh, a lot to do and I also hope to get uh, help from somebody else because I'm, as I said already, my, my main work is uh, doing uh, this uh, Turtle Stitch uh, uh, organ organization. Uh, and uh, I need somebody uh, in my country uh, who is uh, more intensively focusing on schools because I am not a teacher. My background is in the arts and I'm doing this uh, kind of uh, creative uh, coding work since a long time. But I have not really a good background in the kind of organization and all the structures which are so relevant if you, if you uh, communicate with schools. So I hope um, to... to, to get a little bit uh, further in the next weeks and months because now it's uh, the last time uh, before or, or it's it's getting a little bit uh, critical also because the holidays are starting in July so we should reach the schools uh, already before the beginning of July and uh, this uh, this means that uh, the information from Alessandro uh, about reaching the schools is very important for me now thank you silver um, I mean, I, I just, uh, about the ambassadors, like, uh, there's in some countries many ambassadors, some countries only one, or it's, um, <clears throat> That's so basically they are like, uh, the starting point, like to ask them about the events or something or. So that's a good point because uh, uh, this is um, another big difference uh, uh, from country to country. Mm -hmm. So um, in Italy, I, uh, I am the only ambassador. Mm -hmm. and, uh, every time someone uh, uh, volunteer to help, I, um, I, sp I spoke with him or her uh, saying, well, do you prefer to become uh, an ambassador as well? or to uh, have an ambassador to rely on. What I mean is that uh, um, in Italy, there are, uh, I asked uh, in every region, so Italy is divided into regioni, 
and I try to find uh, um, help in each region and uh, people uh, helping me uh, in each region apart for the teachers who are uh, the as you have uh, uh, understood uh, are the core of the movement uh, i i have also um code week representatives in each uh, italian region but uh, we avoided uh, to uh, to call uh, each of them uh, code week ambassador because uh, otherwise uh, there would be no voice uh, to speak uh, to the institutions. So if in Italy there were 21 Code Week ambassadors or 25 or 30 Code Week ambassadors, uh, no one of the ambassadors uh, could speak to the Italian Ministry of Education. No one of the ambassadors could speak uh, with the European Commission. So in the fact of having uh, an ambassador and possibly many people deeply involved, so involved that they are, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, named explicitly in the Italian uh, uh, Code Week website. It is, to me, um, a strength in the sense that this allowed them to uh, refer to someone. Otherwise, each of them should directly try to speak to the institutions uh, without uh, having a single voice and this is a weakness and i'm pretty sure of that and we discussed it many times uh, uh, within uh, the group of code week ambassadors but on the other hand uh, for uh, uh, it is uh, uh, difficult it depends on the conditions uh, and also on the way in which the country is organized because uh, there are for instance countries uh, like uh, switzerland in, in which uh, it is even dif difficult uh, from a language point of view to have just a single ambassador because there are three languages that are spoken in different uh, regions. So uh, there are no, no strict rules, but I'm pretty sure that one of the advantages uh, of the Italian case uh, was uh, the fact uh, of having uh, one ambassador, not because of me, but because uh, of one. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Beatrice. Thank you very much, Alessandro, <laughs> to show us. Uh, thank you for all uh, are you doing for Italy and for Europe. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I, what I do would be nothing without teachers. <laughs> so I, no. I really <laughs> rely totally on teachers. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Alessandro. Okay, thanks Welcome a lot. Welcome to this. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, our group that now it's bigger and it's a very flexible and open group. Our main target is to put people together and show this amazing work you do in each country it's, and to integrate everybody. Thank you very much for all Thank you. your explanations. See you next time. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a nice bye -bye. weekend. Bye-bye.